transition to some to some tragic news. But I also think that she's deserving of, of being talked about. So we were notified yesterday, unfortunately, of the sad passing of of Lucia Harris, died at the age of 66. She's a Hall of Famer, a pioneer when it comes to women's basketball from uh from Minter City, Mississippi, but she did so many things for the game of basketball, especially for women's basketball. She put Delta State on the map. She won three national championships with Delta State. At the time, they were playing in the AIAW era, which essentially served as a proxy for the NCAA tournament. It was the women's national basketball tournament that they were competing for. And she won three titles at Delta State, 1975, 1976, 1977. She became the first woman to score a bucket in the Olympics. So she was part of the first ever 1976 women's Olympic basketball team. She scored the first ever point. It was uh, against Japan at the Montreal Games. In fact, that was the se- uh, a year that the U.S. won silver, won the silver medal. Harris was the leading scorer and rebounder on the team. But when you just look at those accomplishments, and there's still others that I'm going to touch on, that's etched in stone. That that's already leaving an indelible mark on the game of basketball. When you think about the Mount Rushmore for the most influential women's basketball players. Lucia Harris is on that list. She would probably be in the George Washington place on Mount Rushmore, the first one to have her her face chiseled in the mountain. The WNBA wasn't formed until 1996, so these AIAW tournaments were the most coveted tournaments for women's basketball players. She won that three times. She was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1992. She was actually the first black woman to be inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in in 1992. And when you look at some of her contemporaries, uh, uh, Marianne Stanley, who's the current head coach of the Indiana Fever, played for... Immaculata, which was another team in the AIAW era that competed against Delta State during those championship years. And they, they won in 1972 through 1974. But in 1975, 1976, Coach Staley faced off against Harris, just for some context as far as who's still around and the connection to Harris. And get this, in her career, Lucia Harris. She was a three-time All-American. She set the school record for the most points, 2,891. Rebounds with 1,662. She averaged 26 points per game, 14 and a half rebounds in 115 career playoff game, uh, career games, 63% from the floor. Not only that, she was the first woman officially drafted by an NBA team. She was the only woman that was ever drafted by a team. It was the New Orleans Jazz at the time in 1977 that drafted her. And now she she wasn't officially able to to try out for the Jazz because she was pregnant. So she played in the Women's Professional Basketball League in 1979 and to, to 1980. But again, she was the first black woman inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 1992. She was extremely charitable, both in and out of her community. And they even just came out with a detailed series about her. The Queen of Basketball was a featured 2021 short film that detailed her career. And it's deserving because when you talk about the history of women's basketball, you can't discuss it without talking about Lucia Harris. Again, I I, I said earlier that I, I think that she's one of the, she's on the Mount Rushmore for the most influential 
women's basketball players of all time. You can't tell the story of women's basketball without her. The WNBA doesn't exist without her. And it's, it's a shame that we lost her at such a young age, but such a profound life, such a profound impact that she had on the sports community and on the game of basketball. And she will have forever left an indelible mark in that sport. So RIP to Lucia Harris.